Do we have to practice polygamy in heaven? Next on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Pearl, and I appreciate you joining along with us. Uh, last time, we got to meet Alex Alexander, Caleb Alex Alexander, right? Yes. And today, we get to meet his lovely wife, Sherry, and thanks for coming all the way up from Cedar City. Oh, thank you. You had to start early this morning, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> And I appreciate it. We heard just a little bit about your story. Anything you need to, to uh, correct uh, Alex about? <laughs> no. At this point, maybe something will. But anyway, it's nice. We heard little tidbits, and it sounds like you were born in the church. Yes. And you have deep roots, it sounds like. Very deep. Yeah. In fact, you're, is it a great-grandfather kind of? Great-great-great-great-great-grandfather yes. was John Murdoch. Mm -hmm. And he was... At April 6th, 1830, is that true? At the, yeah, he was there. He was at the original meeting. Did he write anything about that or make any notes? Yes, or? he has a journal that's been published. Oh, really? Yeah. Does he mention that Joseph Smith talked about the first vision or that he got the priesthood in that... Um, in that uh, I don't in recall the, in his journal. I've always I know been that interested. John Murdoch received it and... He talked about receiving the priesthood. John Murdoch's yes. priesthood. On, From uh, Joseph Smith. Right. But I just meant during that August or uh, April 6th, 1830 meeting, there's no... I read it as a teenager and I just sure really liked it. his poetry. Yeah. It just seemed, always seemed to me that if, if I was organizing a church 10 years after I saw God and Jesus, that I'd probably mention it there and say I've been given this authority or request or called to be a prophet or something and and then just last year I got the Aaronic priesthood and the Melchizedek priesthood and you know I don't know. Yeah anyway, I don't recall. Whether he said that or not in his... Anyway so tell us where were you born? Were you... American Fork. Were you? And yeah. did you stay there? And were you no. There? Uh, my family didn't live there. Um, I was supposed to have been aborted. And oh gosh. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. a viable pregnancy. Well, look at you. <laughs> I know. I was actually one of the babies that was x rayed. <laughs> really? Back before they knew that was bad. Oh. But um, a cousin, Dr. Murdoch, agreed to do the pregnancy with my mother, so wow. she traveled. Oh, she came up to American Fork. She was living in Pleasant Grove at the time. Oh, okay. So where were you raised then, pretty much? Everywhere. Oh, all over. <laughs> uh, when I was seven, um, I can't remember if I was seven or just after I turned eight, we moved to Chicago, Illinois, until oh. I was 14. Oh. And do you have much memory of Chicago? Yeah, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was in Area 70s out there, and so... Oh, he was? Yeah. Oh. He has gone a lot. <laughs> yeah. And Area 70. Yeah. And, and where was he, where were you living when you went to Chicago for that assignment? Oh, or were you in Chicago? We were in Ogden. Oh, in Ogden. Okay. And uh, he got a job out there, hmm. so we moved. Oh. And uh, it was when we were there that he was called. Called. As a 70. Yeah. So the church has just been your whole life. You're baptized at age eight, and I guess in primary and the yeah. whole. Some of whole my business. earlier memories are being in Gene R. Cook's home with his children. I was good friends with his daughter. Oh my! So, well, just, just to always. pin you down a little bit more, where did you go to high school? <laughs> St. George. St. George. Okay. By now you've moved to St. George. Yeah. And have you been anywhere since then? I mean, have you always been now in St. George? Uh, no, um, uh, when I, we were married, we've been uh, Missouri, California, Nevada. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you are well traveled, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, the church was your whole life, I guess. Yes. You had brothers and sisters, did you? A lot, yeah. Um, from the middle of seven, actually, three oh. sisters, three brothers. Wow, and. Um, I see you're Jesus enough here. Is, is, yeah, was I didn't Jesus... get to go. 
Was Jesus enough as a Mormon? Did you? No. When you, now, as you reflect back on that, growing up, did you? What did you think of Jesus? Um, you know, I mean, obviously taught that he was our older brother, and that you had to follow everything that he told us to follow, and yeah. um, more distant, yeah. not as personal. You really sense that. Yeah, um, because if you get in trouble, then you have to pray immediately <laughs> and, you know, kind of, he wouldn't approve of that. Remember, he's coming back and, yeah. you know, so it was almost a threat. Yeah. Did you take seminary? Oh, yes. Did you? Any questions ever come up in your youth or in seminary that kind of made you think a little bit or think, mm, I guess I'll have to figure that out later? Um, I did go to uh, my father with questions and was basically told to stop questioning. Really? Yeah. Do you remember any specific questions? or? Um, I asked about, well, I even asked about the polygamy at one time and made sure that I would never have to do that. And did he say that you'd have the... I would have to. You'd have to That you just accept it. it. Oh, that you would have to live polygamy? Um, yeah, in, heaven? in Celestial Kingdom, you everybody little... is polygamist. You just deal with it. So then I decided I was just going to be the first wife. And say no, <laughs> <laughs> right? No, I just, you know, oh, I read the... the Bible enough to know that the first wife first had all wife. the power. <laughs> she was in... <laughs> and I guess that's true today in the polygamy groups, generally, is yes. the first wife is the... Uh, the mother of the rest. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just no real questions. The church is just true. And and um, you find somewhere along the way, you find Alex. What? Yep. Uh, how did you draw together? I guess we didn't hear too much about that. Uh, so we, I did meet him at a fireside earlier on. Okay. Uh, the second time I met him, he had cut his hair. I actually did not know it was him. I really? was first introduced to him as Casper. Oh my goodness. And I thought, oh my goodness, another one of those California boys. And, did he have a beard? And, I mean, just the he, long hair and earrings. And I hair. just thought, oh, I, I don't like California guys. So the second time he had his hair cut? He had his hair cut. I was introduced to him as Caleb. <laughs> I had no, actually it was a couple weeks before our wedding that I found out it was him. <laughs> And it was the same one that you'd met yes. that week. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Somebody called him Casper. I said, I think I've met a Casper before. He goes, well, yeah, we met at a fireside. And I said, that was you. He <laughs> said it was really actually kind of a nervous moment for him. He thought I was going to back out right then. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So why did he happen to cut his hair? Just for you, do you think? Oh, no. Or change his appearance, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Was it love at first sight for you, too? or? Um. He kind of indicated, time. yeah, the second time. <laughs> second time, yeah. not the first time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting. And so uh, you just were well, happy. and courtship. Yeah, yeah. Married and then eventually in the temple. Had you been through the temple before? No. You hadn't been. No, I was actually, though, planning on going on an LDS mission when I met him. Oh, you were. And did I was you, going was through the process. Was this disappointing to the family that you... They did not know. So I had fallen away oh. for a while and had just been brought back in and was talking to my singles ward bishop about it. Okay. He was helping me go through the process. It was to be a surprise. Oh, to the family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's interesting how we have our ups and downs in life and... W Anyway, so you, you get married and eventually sealed in the temple. And, and what was that experience like for you? Well, my grandfather officiated. so oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> uh, both sets of grandparents worked in the temple. Oh, okay. And so it was, it was a little nerve-wracking. I was trying to remember everything. I remember being very nervous that oh, I sure. would forget yeah. Make sure any small part. Make sure we remember the right stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I felt the same way. Um, so then just busy, active, and becoming a mom and all the things that go along with life. I was immediately called into the primary, yes. Oh, yeah. Spend a lot of time there. And, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, 
I remember moving into a ward and two weeks after we moved in, I was called to teach the eight-year-olds. Mm. Just kind of what I did. Yeah. I would be released when I was having trouble with pregnancies. Then as soon as the kids were about four months old, I'd get called back. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's hard to, to, do you feel like you spend a lot of time or some time studying the church and the, the Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants and all that? By Is, the time I got married, I had read it cover to cover 25 times. Oh, really? The Book of Mormon? Never any questions about it? Or? Well, it's usually at 6 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and then little snippets or little chapters? Oh, we'd chapter read a chapter a day at least. Oh, with the family? Yeah. Oh, okay. 25 times. Oh, wow. yes. And um, had you prayed about it and no. got the burning in the bosom or anything? No. Hadn't I was you? just raised to always believe it and yeah. just told that's what it was and not to question. So. Hmm. Even with the Moroni's promise at the end, you you just uh, yeah just believed it. Yeah, you know? I was just told to. And the prophets, and the, I guess you listened to a lot of general conference over the years, and yes, with sounds, snacks. <laughs> with snacks. <laughs> well, it's a big day for us. So Super Bowl for you know other people is big. Yeah. For our family, it general, was general conference, conference. Yeah, twice a all year. All the snacks come out. We all sit in blankets. Try not to fall asleep. <laughs> no, oh, you don't fall asleep. Oh. My dad's a jokester. <laughs> oh. You got water. <laughs> oh, you really? Got Put some water on you. <laughs> well, I always wanted the kids to at least listen to a couple of talks, especially the prophet, but uh, we, didn't, we didn't force them to listen to all of them, but we always did, you know, the yeah. mom, and, mom and dad. So you just go along in life and everything's happy and you're, are you satisfied with your Mormon life and all that at this point? Um, no. Uh, having children that were not neurotypicals mm. kind of caused ripples a yeah. lot. Um, you know, they would be inappropriate. I was never the perfect Mormon mom. Mm. So there was a lot of pressure there, and really? uh, I actually ended up um, under a lot of stress and pressure, ended up in the hospital mm. with a uh, palsy seizure and oh, gosh. some severe migraines and mm -hmm. issues like that, yeah. put on the antidepressants and mm -hmm. anti-seizure medicine. And, yeah. uh, I was also going to school, my, my husband, was struggling with his health at the point and so I was working a lot and going to school and trying to be the working mom and the perfect Mormon mom and I just wasn't succeeding. A lot of stress and a lot of and you felt what do you feel at this point? I mean you just Free. Well no I meant during this oh, during, during that, this time you just just that I'd never live up to it. Was God punishing you, or were you just I, not keeping all the commandments? I actually became very angry with him. You're not keeping all the commandments or something? No, know? I just thought, um, I, I became angry that he had given me some tough Challenge. challenges yeah. to live through. Um, and it just, life got a little hard with, you know, my husband was losing his jobs at this point. He was unable to work. Because of his I, illness. Yeah. yeah. I just became very angry that he had, it felt like a cursing upon my children. Mm. Um, their special needs did at the time and just didn't think I could go on. I'm sorry, that must have been really challenging. Uh, and where along the way was this? Were you? Um, this was How long about ago? 2016, I think. Oh, really? That recent? Yes. Oh, wow. And uh, so you'd had all your, you've had five children, yeah. was it? Five children. And, uh, and raising them and everything. But you also have uh, a degree. Yes. Now, where you um, got through school. I finished school in 2017 with my bachelor's degree and uh, became a support coordinator an external support coordinator for the Division of Services for People with Disabilities. Yeah, that's wonderful. But I had worked um, 
for a provider before then. Yeah. So I've worked in the field for, I started time. the day after my 18th birthday in the field. Oh, really? So before having children. Oh, you were drawn to that. Uh, so, it, so what happens, I guess, I guess on a religious level, I'm so sorry to hear about the challenges that you've had. And They're good. Sounds like you've got a great attitude about things. And uh, um, so what happens on the religious side of things? Um, my husband came to me and told me he has quit the LDS church. Um, and it was shortly after my son had decided not to go on a mission. And so there was a kind of a stigma how do, that how goes does, along how with How does that. a husband do that? <laughs> Just Quite sat you down, did he? <laughs> <laughs> Just came in and announced it one day. He, he kind of has that uh, He's a very blunt for, person. Yeah. <laughs> so what he said, I, I, I'm through with the church, or I don't believe it anymore. Yeah, did he's he offer expressed any explanation? a lot of um, issues over the years. I don't know about this. And what does this mean? And yeah. if I couldn't explain it, I'd go to my dad and he'd give me the explanation. And I knew he was unhappy. I knew he had doubts. Yeah. Um, and I'd always say, oh, well, that's Satan working on you. Sure. Um, Trying to deceive the very elect, as they say. But I think if I had believed more, I probably would have been more active. <laughs> oh. So I think there was always something that didn't sit right with me. Maybe God was softening your heart a little bit or something. Yeah, yeah I always laugh. He, it took a while. My husband had to be patient with me for 20 <laughs> years. <laughs> well, and God's so patient too, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. So then you, what do you do at this point? You, He's, he's made this announcement. You say, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to church and forget it. Or well, you? I just said, you know, I... I believe in eternal families, and I don't want to lose my eternal family. That was a very frightening thought for me not to yeah. have that uh, assurance that I had always been given. Yeah. Even though I always doubted that I could ever make it high enough <laughs> make to it, <laughs> make it there. You always my thoughts were that. always bad. So, right. <laughs> am I going to make it to the celestial kingdom anyway? You know. But I knew my daughter would, because she's perfect. She, yeah. She was born perfect, and so. It was always, uh, I've got to do it, I've got to do it. I want to be with my family. But at the same time, their behaviors often kept us away from church. Mm, that's understandable. Yeah. Did you, uh, did, was there specific things that he brought up that you would then go research or study, or what did you do? So he told me about the... He'd tell me different things, and I'd go, you know, I really wish you'd quit reading the anti-LDS. I don't want to hear any more about that. Yeah, this, no. it, I said, you know, you're reading lie. It's just liars, people who are sinners is what I've always, always taught. And bitter and, you know, all that stuff. They couldn't live it. <laughs> yes. They wanted to go and sin. Right. Uh, and so he said, no, you know, I read this on um, LDS.org. The church put these essays out. Oh, the and I thought, well, you're just pushing and trying to see things in it. So I would really not listen when he talked about it. And then one day I thought, you know, I really should know what that is. And so I went and started reading them. And I spent about three hours just reading one after the other. And I just kind of I called opening, him huh? and I said, did you know this was in there? <laughs> he goes, well, yeah. yeah. So... I next went to my dad for explanation, you know. With these essays? With the essays. In hand, and so to speak. Well, yeah. And, and, yeah. You know, this is what I was yeah, taught with the first, you know, the first vision was a very big one for me. Yeah. Especially. Me too. Being in the psychology field. And yeah. I was told, well, he was just talking to different people. And yeah. so it was, you know. Different audiences. I said, yeah. but, but they're different enough you know, I understand how memory works. If it were that significant, the small details would be remembered. Yeah. And the the details are changing. And he, oh, you're looking for things. And I said, okay, well then, how do you explain him marrying married women and, and that's a 14-year-old daughter or a 14-year-old little says, girl yeah. that he married? And, well, it never said that he had sexual relations. I said, well, what they said is that they can't, they don't know 
for sure whether or not. Yeah. Said, so that kind of is almost admitting they know, because now you're reading into it. I said, okay, well, then explain why Joseph Smith said women were getting the priesthood and gave parts of the priesthood to certain women, and then it was taken from them mm. when he said it was going to happen. And he said, oh, well, no, you're just misreading that. So I read it to him. He goes, well, you're just taking it out of context. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, Dad, I'm not. That's kind of the way we would look at, we good Mormons would look at things, all right, and just to dismiss what we don't understand. And, well, and then and, he said, well, uh, you know, your brothers and sisters have all read them, and they don't have a problem with them. Oh. Okay. But I do. <laughs> <laughs> so. So that wasn't helpful. Uh, Not really. Yeah. Um, at that point, I took off my garments and really? was kind of done. Um, I said, you know, as long as I'm doubting to this degree, I shouldn't be wearing them. Yeah. I hadn't thrown them away or anything. I just took them off. And I thought, I'm going to talk to my parents about it after Christmas because I didn't want to ruin Christmas. And this is like 2017? It was just last It was just this last oh, year. 2018, okay. Yeah. And my son went and told them. My 19-year-old son, I said, well, then cat's out of the bag. So I told them the truth. Um, I jokingly told my husband I wouldn't go to church with him till he grew his hair because I was really tired of him being bald. <laughs> so he actually did grow his hair. Oh, my goodness. I went to church uh, at first, kind of very reserved. I When you say church, scary. where did you go? Sunrise the Christian Sunrise Church. The Sunrise in Cedar yeah. City. It, very reserved. Um, it was very different than anything I had been through. Yeah, what'd you think? A little scared. Yeah, the music? I loved the music. Did you? Yes, that, that's actually what touched me the most was the music. Isn't that amazing? And did you obviously notice, and we say this all the time, but just how worshipful it is to Jesus? And yeah. You've never experienced that before, had you? I hadn't experienced the feelings that it gave me. Yeah. The extreme feelings. Right. Um, I said the prayer more out of curiosity, to be honest, than I think accepting at that moment. I was very curious, and I said it. And you then mean it was, like a sinner's prayer? Is that what you're? I'm uh, sorry, the no, prayer. No, the prayer. Uh, so our our pastor oh. um, gives everybody the um, we all do the prayer to accept Christ. Oh, okay. And everybody says it in that way. If you're new and you don't want to be singled out, you can oh. do it without feeling like people are looking at you. Oh, I see. And then, so I did, and it was yes. just this immense freedom. I just felt accepted in a way from from Jesus that I had never felt accepted before. You really believed the words, huh? Yes. That, and the feeling that you were feeling. It was just a. It was a freedom that. Yeah. I was loved. I was okay. Yeah. And did you start sense? I mean, uh, to start sensing what Jesus had actually done for us. Did you? We did you appreciate that as a Mormon? Not fully. Yeah. Um, I had read the miracles of forgiveness, so right. and you I knew had been Jesus told how bad I was. And you knew Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And I knew the basics. That. Yeah. But the fact that it was free. <laughs> we didn't understand that. It wasn't it wasn't an understanding I had. And the cross? I was always told to avoid the cross. I know. We don't focus on his death, only on his life. Yeah. And and yet that's where he shed his blood and that's where And that's where was, he gave us. Yeah. Paid for our sins. Yeah. Aren't you aren't you just can you believe you're here at this point? No. I mean, a couple of years ago, you'd have thought, A year ago, what? I wouldn't have <laughs> believed it. You would never have thought this, you could even be doing this. No. No. Uh, it's, it is, it's miraculous, and it's just like a burden is off your shoulders, isn't there? And a, yes. A freedom, but but yet you're trusting now in I feel in like Jesus. a better mom. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. More gracious or... What? Just what? What? What do you mean? I'm, I don't have to live up to the perfect Mormon mom standards. Yeah. With being perfect in all of your crafts, your cooking, your house, your everything, while being a full-time working mom. Sure. Because I've worked 
at least one full-time job and sometimes two. All these years. Huh? And so I was never the perfect mom. And now my kids love me. We talk about Jesus. We listen to Christian music. And it's just a happier home. Had you ever done that as a Mormon? No. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's just so different. You know, one thing that just got me and it just hit me, but uh, so I think I better say it, but the whole thing about tithing, it's such a standard in the church, this 10%, you know, mm -hmm. and of course, how, who defines that, but the 10%, as opposed to being a cheerful giver. Yes. I mean, that whole concept is just so, you have this law on one end, and you have this grace and, and your heart on the other side where you're a gracious giver and, and you cheerfully give, whether it's 15 or 30 percent or 2 percent, if that's what you, you can afford. You give what you can. You can. And it feels free. And you're giving, you're giving your best. I feel happier about giving. Don't you, though? When I put it in, it's whatever with a the smile, amount is. rather than a, if I don't give the exact amount, then I can't go to the temple. And exactly. then people will think less of me. Yeah. And it's still living up to that image that you have to maintain. I just wish more Mormons could sense that joy that we feel, the liberty, and having Instead that... Instead of the fire insurance? Yeah, and having that, uh, the laws done away with in Jesus, that he paid for our sins, and we've been given this free gift of eternal life if we'll just accept it. Yep. Sounds easy, doesn't it? It does, and it feels yeah. nice. Does it really? Uh, yeah, it does for me, too. Well, anything, I know you've got such a, a really a wonderful family. I mean, I'm I sure do. these good Mormons have just been the best people and raised you. And, they have. And proud of their heritage and all that stuff. And, and you know, we don't, we never want to act like we hate Mormons or oh, have anything not. but love for them. And that's why we do this, you know. Yes. But the Mormonism that puts us under bondage and... Well, that's what we want people to understand. Yes. You know, that, that that's not necessary. So anything you want to say to your sweet family and I if love they'll you. listen to this. Jesus loves you <laughs> and it's all free. That's a good message, huh? So again, Carla and I, my wife, we just look at each other every once in a while and say, Well what ha what just happened? <laughs> you know, now it's been seven years, so it's not quite but for you it's my, almost like, gee, what how, who turned that corner? <laughs> I'm still surprised oh, yeah. almost daily by what I read in the Bible. Yeah. Isn't that fun? It is. To read something like And I have to only read one book, which is nice, too. Yes. I like that part of it. But uh, to read what Paul wrote. And, so now you don't have to live polygamy in heaven. I know. Right? Thank goodness. <laughs> I would be horrible at it. But you were the first <laughs> wife, so that was yeah, good. Well, yeah. It worked out well. Yeah. Anyway, so... You, said what you want to to your family there and yeah well thanks so much for coming up and uh, thank you for having appreciate me. it Sherry you're a sweet lady and good luck with your family and with all yeah. the people you mentioned that you work with 41 different people yes. right now uh, um, currently have a load of 41 and your approach to them probably is a little different now too isn't it when you deal with them and um, with the, I've always loved well, them yeah I've always just serve them out of love and, and you see what tried to do my best God's to help hand them in their lives and they're so sweet yes aren't they they are well thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time on the ex-mormon files <laughs>